Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the notion of the differential of a function. So say we have a function y equals f of x, then we can find the derivative of y with respect to x, and we can also write this, of course, as f prime of x, being the slope of the function at x. And if you look at the notation dy over dx, this has a very intuitive meaning, right? dy is an infinitesimal change in y, which means a change in y that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, therefore a change in y that approaches zero. And similarly, dx is an infinitesimal change in x, so a change in x that also approaches zero. So as we take a smaller and smaller change in y over a smaller and smaller change in x, in the limit we obtain the exact slope of the function f prime of x. So we can view dy and dx as separate quantities, dy being an infinitesimal change in y, dx being an infinitesimal change in x, and so we can isolate dy by multiplying both sides by dx. So we have the dy, an infinitesimal change in y equals the derivative of the function times an infinitesimal change in x. And dy is what we call the differential of the function. So this is the differential of the function y equals f of x. Of course, if we have a function of not x but some other variable, then we will differentiate with respect to whatever the independent variable is. So let's look at three examples of this. Let's start with, say, a function of x. So y is equal to, say, the sine of x cubed. So first we find the derivative. So here by the chain rule, we will get cosine of x3, but then times the derivative of the argument, which is 3x squared. So this completes the derivative. We can, of course, write the simpler term first. And then we have the derivative of the function dy over dx. And again, the differential is simply the infinitesimal change in y of the function, dy, and so to isolate dy we multiply by dx. Therefore the differential of the function sine of x cubed is 3x squared cos of x cubed, but of course times the infinitesimal change in x dx. And so the differential of sine of x cubed is 3x squared cos of x cubed dx. Let's now do a second example, but we will take a function not of x, but say t. So y equals say t times e to the t. Now since we have a function of t, we will differentiate y with respect to its independent variable, which is t. So dy over dt. And now we have a product, t times e to the t, and so we differentiate with the product rule. So derivative of the first function is 1 times the second function, e to the t, plus the first function, t, times the derivative of the second, which is itself e to the t. We can factor e to the t as a common term, and we're left with t plus 1. So we now have the derivative of the function with respect to t. And again, the differential is dy. And so to isolate dy, the differential of the function, we multiply our derivative by the change in the independent variable, in this case, dt. Let's do one more example. Let's now take a function, say, of z, 
So z squared over 6z plus 1. Now y is a function of z, so we will differentiate y, of course, with respect to z, being the independent variable. We have a quotient of two functions of z, so we differentiate with the quotient rule. So we get 2z times the denominator, then minus z squared times 6 over the denominator squared. We can now, of course, simplify. On the numerator, we have a common factor of 2 and of z. So we can factor 2z. And if we do, we're left with 6z plus 1 in the first case. Then minus, take away 2 from 6, you're left with 3. And take away z from z squared, you're left with z. So then here we are left with negative 3z. And if we simplify what's left over, we obtain 3z plus 1. But that is not our final answer. This is the derivative of the original function. The differential is the change in y. So, of course, we multiply the derivative by the change in z. And this is now the differential of the original function. And that's it.